شبات شلون ما به خاطر حضور جنرال روزن اسپیچ امروز رو به انگلیسی میگم انشالله که منو میلا میکنید so today's speech is going to be in English because of the honor of the general Rosen here. Um, this Shabbat is the Shabbat of portion Chaye Sarah, means the life of Sarah. And when we study, we see this portion not only talks about the life of Sarah, it's, all, it's also talk about the life of Abraham. Why do we read this section? This Shabbat. Why is it designed from the first day of creation that this section of the Torah to be read in all the synagogue all around the world, from Jerusalem, from Tel Aviv, to Los Angeles, to Tehran, to Shiraz, everywhere we read this section. The section that seems to be the story of the life of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rivka, an amazing story. But we know the Torah is not about stories. The wisdom of the Torah, when we read it on Shabbat, is to generate, to awaken a light force, an energy that is within the reading of the Torah, to bring a certain energy to the whole world. There is so much to learn, there is so much to understand, there is so much to study about Chaye Sarah. Nagobalim explains that the correction, the tikkun of every one of us lies between the portion of the Torah that we are born into. So this portion is special to me. From the day that I learned that my collection, might is within the secrets of Chaye Sarah. I've studied this parasha more than any other parasha to understand what is it for me to correct, what is it for me to remove any negativity that, I, that is within me. Too. And then when you study this parasha, you see that the Torah calls Sarah and Abraham tamim, tamimim. That means being perfect. Simplicity, perfection in the certainty of the life force of God. It seems that Sarah lived every moment of her life and Abraham lived every moment of his life in a consciousness that had simplicity in it, an understanding and a connection to the ultimate level of certainty to Hashem. There is a sentence in this reading that we read it every Rosh Kodesh and every Moadim. Right after we read the Hallel, there is a sentence that we repeat three times. And it says, Abraham Zaken, Baba Yamim, Hashem, Barach et Avraham, Bakol. If you remember every Rosh Kodesh and every Mu'adim, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, we recite this section three times. Avraham Zaken, Baba Yamim, Hashem, Barach et Avraham, Bakol. It means, it means that Avraham was old. And he was advanced in his age. And Hashem blessed him in everything. Abraham was old. And then the Maqbalim explains, especially Sfat Emet explains, that when the Torah talks about Abraham being old, it doesn't necessarily mean age as our, what we call, refer to age. It refers to his chokhmah, to his wisdom, that Abraham was wise, was full of chokhmah, full of wisdom. And because of this attribute, 
because of his attribution of having this chokhmah, this wisdom, God gave him all the blessing. All the blessing. So it seems the condition, the condition to receive all the blessing that we want, everything that we want from God, from Hashem, depends upon, depends upon our level of wisdom, our level of chokhmah. And in a nutshell, what emanates from the reading of the Torah in this synagogue and all the synagogue in the world is to awaken, to awaken that consciousness, that energy to every soul in this world to reach to the level that Sarah and Abraham received, to this level of wisdom. What is true wisdom? There is a section in the, this week's Zohar, Chayesara, section for those who are interested, section 118. You know, even the section, the number of the section has its own significance. 100 and 1818 is Chay. It explains <laughs> what is this wisdom that Abraham and Sarah gained? What is it for us? to gain this Shabbat. Rabbi, Sh Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai explains that there is this <laughs> level of spirituality, this level of wisdom, this level of consciousness called Hishtabot. Hishtabot means balance, a level of balance, level of being centered. What does it mean? Zohar explains where Abraham was, where Sarah was, during all the life, all the life, not just the end of their life, every second of their life, every moment of their life. When the Torah explains the life of Sarah was 120 and 7 that we explain, we learn in the Kabbalah classes, in the previous Shabbats, of the previous years, we understood that Sarah lived every moment of her life to its fullest. And Abraham lived every moment of his life into fullest. Did they have challenges? Of course. Did God test them? Every moment of their life. Did they go through difficulties? Absolutely. Did they experience darkness? Of course. Did things happen to them to totally change their emotion and they become reactive? Maybe. Did Abraham ever become reactive? Never. Did Sarah ever become reactive because of the steps or the challenges or the darkness or misfortunes? Never. They stayed proactive. They stayed they stayed in the middle. No matter what happened, good or bad, they didn't lose themselves. They never got to one side. Abraham never said, why this happened to me? Sarah never said, why such a person said such a thing to me? They always said, what is it for me? Why this is happening? For me, where is the light of this challenge that I'm facing right now? What is the light beyond the mitzvah of Brit Milah for me? What is the light behind binding of the Isaac for me? It says Abraham got up early in the morning to do Atikat Sak, to bind Isaac. He didn't even wait. He didn't let the emotion take over him. Why read this section in the month of Heshwan? Because this is the month of emotion. Because it's only by um, it's our emotion that makes us reactive. We hear good news, we become reactive. We become too happy. We celebrate too much. 
Something negative happens, something darkness happens, we become reactive. Sorrow takes over, fear takes over. You know, it's amazing that General is here. And when I visited the Air, the Air, the Air Force three years ago, I had this good. Things happen. And you should see these pilots. They don't get emotional. They do what they have to do. They get into their plane, they get into their jets, they get into the helicopter, and they do what they have to do. They don't become emotional. They don't think right or left. They stay in the consciousness of Ishtabot, in the middle. Balance. What is my tikkun? What is my correction? What is my responsibility in this world? And this is what they do. And this is the key to the all the blessing. It says, Abraham zaken ben bayamim, Hashem berach et Abraham bakol. Because Abraham was in a state of hishtabot, balance, he received all the blessing. And then Zohar comes and explains this, that when do we get worried? Where is worry comes from? Where is fear comes from? Where is reactivity comes from? Is the byproduct of the body consciousness, of the etzadat. <laughs> when God told Adam, there are two realities. There are two realities, there are two consciousness. Etzachayim, the tree of life, and etzadat, the tree of good and bad. Connect to etzachayim. Stay with the tree of life, because that's where all the blessings Stay balanced. Don't go to Ed Sadat, the good and the bad. One day is good, one day is bad, one day I receive a good news, one day is bad news. But we live in this physical world, in this physical world that seems, that seems to be ruled by the good and bad. So how can I connect myself to Ed Sahayim? We have a choice. We do have a choice every moment of our life. Everything that something happens, you have a choice. Clearly, he states in the Torah, choose life. He says, I'll put in front of you two different consciousness, two different opportunities to choose, two different reality. Choose life. Choose at Sahayim. Every time something happens to us, every time we face a challenge, every time we face difficulties, we face darkness, and it happens all the time, all the time, <clears throat> you have a choice to connect to the physical aspect of that challenge, to fall into the realm of physicality, to be impressed by the consciousness of Etzadat, or you have a choice to connect to Etzachayim, to the upper world. You know, our day, every day in Hebrew calendar, starts with the evening. Shabbat started last night around 6 o'clock. What did we face first? The darkness. First comes the darkness. Then comes the light of Shabbat. First comes the challenge. First comes the vessel. Night is the vessel. It's an empty vessel. It's an empty vessel. It's a darkness, it's a challenge. It's a step, it's a test. Always comes. Why? Because God wants to give you the light. If you don't have a vessel, you cannot receive the light. If you want to drink water, you need a cup to put the water in to drink it. If you want to eat, you have to have a plate to put the food in it. So I have to establish that vessel. I have to create that vessel. I have to welcome the vessel, I have to welcome the challenges, the darkness, the test, 
so I can bring in the light. There is no way that we receive the light without darkness. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So I cannot sit in my comfort zone and wish that God doesn't send me any challenges. Because if, if I wish for that, then I'm not wishing for any lights. I have to welcome every test, every steps, every opportunity that gives me the chance to bring light and blessing into my life. And the only way is to stay proactive. When the challenge comes, I ask myself, what is it for me? Not why this is happening to me, why this is for me. It's a challenge for me. Every day, Hashem wants to give you a new light. Every second of your life, just like Sarah and Abraham, God wants to give you a light, a new light, a light that comes from the realm of or Haganos, the concealed light. He wants to give you light, He wants to give you blessing every day, every second, just like the father who wants to nourish his children, just like a mom who wants to nourish her child. But with that comes the challenge so we can earn that light. So it's not Hashem. It's the fruit of this portion of Chaye Sarah, which talks about the real life. And with the fruit of having General Rosa here, I look at you and uh, it just brings so much. I don't know what is the right word to say. The appreciation for who you are, what you do, for what you represent, for all the security. I mean, we in the United States, we're so afraid of little things, we become so reactive when something happens. And I've seen, and I've seen you and all the people in the Israeli Air Force Center, that they face this challenge every second, every second of their life. And you bring stability, security to the, not to Israel, because Israel is the heart of the universe. And you bring security to Israel. We want to thank you.